And at this time, I will now turn this webinar over to Lotika for us to begin. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the BACP Empower Hour. I'm Lotika Pai, Chief Small Business Officer with the Chicago Department of Business Affairs and Consumer Protection, also known as BACP. This webinar series is meant to help businesses and consumers get the information they need to succeed by sharing advice and stories from Chicago's very own entrepreneurs. Additionally, October is Polish American Heritage Month, and we want to acknowledge and celebrate Chicago's Polish owned businesses for being part of our small business community. With us today is Greg Zivach, owner of Dwell Studio Chicago. A relatively new studio, Dwell has become and has been able to secure art from local and international artists securing its space in the arts and culture community in Chicago. Let's find out what led to the business and the studio to create a welcoming space for artists and art aficionados. Good afternoon, Craig. Thank you for joining us today. Um, before we get into the questions, can you tell our webinar attendees a little bit about yourself? Sure. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here. My name is Greg Zivac, and uh, my wife and I, we both run the Dwell Studio Chicago. We are actually celebrating our third anniversary. It's going to be in a few days since we opened. So that's uh, really exciting for us. I'm originally from Poland, but I have been in Chicago for about 24 years now. And um, we, my whole family is here and we love the city. And um, before Dwell Studio, uh, we both with my wife, uh, we worked as IT consultants, which uh, had us traveling all over the United States. And uh, it was great. Uh, we, we liked that job, but uh, we decided that Chicago was the place where we wanted to settle down and um, start something on our own. So that's yeah. uh, that was the idea. That's fantastic. First of all, Craig, congratulations. Three years in a few days. That's a big landmark celebration. Congratulations. Thank you for choosing Chicago to open your business uh, to both you and your wife. So what led you to opening Dwell Studio? Well, uh, like I mentioned, it was, uh, I was, uh, we were in IT for a while and traveling a lot, helping doctors and nurses uh, with the electronic documentation systems. But after a while, all that travel took its toll. We, we were missing family events and uh, losing that connection to friends and to the city and to the community. So especially the Chicago summers and the festivals and, and all the great places we have here. So we decided it was time to settle down and uh, reconnect uh, with, uh, with our roots here, uh, build a um, community. We wanted to create something creative, a place uh, that wasn't just a business, but more like a community hub where we could meet new people, share ideas, have people share ideas, um, and really uh, be a part of something bigger. Um, that's um, that's how we started the uh, Dual Studio. Thank you for sharing that. Community spaces play such an important role in our neighborhoods. Um, so a business name, obviously, is very important for branding and awareness. How did you decide on Dwell Studios as the business name? Yes, uh, picking the name was uh, important to us as well. Uh, we wanted something that really reflected what we are about and what we're trying to achieve here. Uh, dwell means uh, to live, to reside, um, to to set roots somewhere. And uh, we wanted our space to be feel like home uh, for everyone, not just uh, for us, but for, ev for everyone that walks through our doors. Um, so that's the dwell part. The studio, of course, uh, represents a space for creativity where people can 
collaborate, can create, can um, express themselves, um, where they can share the um, the biggest achievements, basically, not only in art, but um, all other fields. So we open to all kind of ideas. And Chicago, of course, um, we in Chicago, the city grounds us, uh, we love it, and uh, we felt like uh, it's part of us and uh, should be part of the name as well. So that's um, Dual Studio Chicago here. Thank you. I love that, you know, the idea of being home, setting down roots and being a community space. Um, it just encapsulates so many different things in the name. Thank you for sharing that. You know, obviously, Greg, you serve a lot of Polish clients and artists. You know, Chicago is a city of neighborhoods. We have 77 neighborhoods across the city. Why did you choose Dunning neighborhood to open your business? And also, you know, when you compare that to some of the other notable Polish neighborhoods like Avondale or Garfield Ridge, why Dunning? Well, that's a great, great question, of course. Um... Chicago has such a rich Polish uh, history, like you mentioned. And in fact, uh, we even collaborated with the um, Polish photographer uh, that came here from Poland um, two years ago and last year on a project called Polish Kaleidoscope Chicago. Uh, the project highlight through the photography, it highlighted uh, the di diversity of the Polish community here in Chicago and, and, and the whole metropolis. Uh, he photographed and presented the polls in Chicago from very diverse walks of life. It was an incredible experience. Um, but um, uh, Duning, of course, um, it's one of the Polish neighborhoods, uh, one of many. Of course, when you think about Polish neighborhoods, uh, back of the yards was one of the first Polish settlements uh, and famous uh, about 100 years ago. Then we had Polonia Triangle comes to mind, as well as Avondale and uh, Garfield Ridge uh, as well. But um, Dunning is where I lived for the last 20 something years since I came here. And uh, that feels like home for me. So this era, uh, is close to me. It's on the edge of the city, which is perfect uh, for us because it lets us, lets us uh, serve both the city people and also pe Polish people and other communities from the suburbs. We know uh, lots of Polish uh, people move to the suburbs and uh, we're trying to bridge the gap between the city and the suburbs. And uh, also <laughs> we live above the studio, so it's really our home. That's great. Thank you. Um, you know, Chicago definitely has a very rich Polish cultural history. Um, and according to your website, uh, Dwell Studio is a creative space for artists, life perfectionists, and meaning explorers. So I understand artists. Uh, would you care to elaborate for our audience and me? you know, the terms life perfectionists and explorers, meaning explorers? Yes, of course. Um, yes, yeah, so the artist um, at Dual Studio, who we meet here are people who are really connected to the craft and the passion and, and what they do. And they are the creative ones. Very fun to hang out with, of course. Life per perfectionists. Um, are people who really strive to improve, whether in art or in business or just in life, they are dedicated. They're full of energy and always looking to grow. So that's uh, something we like to attract here as well. But we also open to those meaning explorers, as, which uh, might be part of the two first groups as well. Those are people who are searching for the deeper purpose and understanding uh, what they do, always asking the uh, the big question and uh, looking for new insights and um, you know trying to explore what's new, what's possible. And uh, all the three groups uh, we feel like um, can bring a lot 
to the table a lot uh, um, to build community together and um, to exchange the ideas and and really create the community around us. That okay. answer had so many layers to it, Greg. I think so many of us would fit within the life perfectionist and the meaning explorer buckets. Uh, I had never really quite thought of those terms in, in, in that phrasing. Wow. Um, yeah. So, you know, when you look at your studio, um, you obviously feature a lot of Polish artists. Um, you know, who are some of, you know, what are some of your art exhibits that are currently being featured in your gallery? And then how do you go about curating the work, like selecting artists, when their work is going to be displayed? What are you going to display? So what does the process look like for you? Okay. Um, yeah, we, we've got some exciting things lined up um, uh, here as well, but... Um... Currently, we are having a, a show by Agnieszka Podczaszy called Affinity, which I think uh, reflects uh, very well on her art. And um, at the end, of, at the end of the show, uh, which is November November the second, we're gonna have a fashion show also by by the same artist. She is a very creative person. She's a painter, she's a singer, and she's a designer. So her clothing collection, uh, I believe it's going to be incredible. Um, after that, we're going to be hosting uh, a photography show. Uh, it's going to be called Be Like Vincent, curated by Ivona Piętowska. It's an impressionist-inspired event where photographers can submit the work for display. And uh, we even encouraging uh, costumes and props to make it fun, immersive experience. Of course, Ivona uh, prepared some other uh, surprises uh, that are gonna be happening during the, the event. Uh, and that's gonna be on November the 9th. Um, when it comes to selecting artists, um, we all about building community, like I said, and uh, of creative and interesting people. It's not just about, uh, it's not only about featuring well-known names. We love giving emerging talents the opportunity to showcase their work as well. Um, we've hosted events for, we also hosted events for kids um, and and the teachers and uh, the um people that are allowing them to, to grow and to, to learn and explore the artistic sides. And watching them uh, display the art uh, to a larger audience, uh, often for the first time, is really exciting. So um, we grow growing the network uh, organically. And we're always trying to bring some people that are uh, interesting and have some interesting art and uh, in something interesting to show. It's not only paintings or photography, uh, it's also book promotion, it's uh, uh, it's promoting a movie uh, with the with the um, um, artists that were in a movie with it's it's theater plays. Uh, we had those as well. In fact, uh, we had the uh, opening of uh, six Polish uh, theater congress here uh, a few weeks ago, and we had a few plays of uh, theaters from Poland. So that was interesting also. So uh, growing the, the artist network uh, is very organic. We're always looking for new people that can um, present something. Oh. I mean, that is incredibly diverse. So you've gone, you know, traditional artists, you have fashion, you know, fashion shows, theater, children's programs, this anything that is arts and culture related, you seem to be embracing that. And you're building your community. It was so wonderful to hear that answer. So do people come to you? Greg, or do you actively are you on the lookout for new artists? 
Um, honestly, it's been all about being open and approachable. My wife and I, we love meeting people and uh, getting involved in local events. Uh, mm -hmm. We attend uh, art shows, cultural gather gatherings, festivals, and uh, we're always looking to connect with like-minded individuals. So I think it's more organic. Uh, we're always looking, but also people come to us through our network and uh, it grows. It's grown since the three years since we opened. It's grown substantially and we're very happy about that. That's great. So, you know, obviously um, Dell Stu Dwell Studios Chicago is a business. Yes, your focus on arts and culture at the end of the day, it is a business. And many of the attendees on the webinar um, today are looking to start a business or they're looking to scale a business. And typically it takes capital to start or scale a business. So can you share some advice on this business aspect with our attendees, access to capital? How did that look like for you when you started it and when you started growing your business? Absolutely. Um, when we started Dwell Studio, we didn't just dive in and quit our day jobs right away. Um, we kept multiple income streams, which gave us the financial um, stability while we build the business, of course. This is important. Uh, we're still keeping multiple streams of income to this day, so we can you know, have uh, the flexibility and um, freedom to choose um, to collaborate with interesting people that actually fit our values and bring something here. Um, I think um, that is a very in important uh, part of it, uh, having that uh, financial backup. Uh, so you don't just jump in and um, uh, commit all your time and all your uh, money to this one uh, project or one enterprise or business or without uh, having um, uh, the cushion or the transition time when you're going to explore whether it's going to work or not. Yeah. That's very... Uh, right. Yeah, Go also... Ahead. Thank you. Also, um, I... Uh, we shouldn't be afraid to leverage our community. Um, organizations like uh, um, Polish Chamber of Commerce uh, have been incredibly supportive of us. Uh, uh, they they offered resources, connections, and uh, mentorship. Um, so uh, people should shouldn't be afraid of reaching out to local business groups or cultural organizations or. If this is a different kind of business, there's always uh, some support group uh, where they could uh, reach out and maybe find some mentorship or some help. Um, you know, from the city of Chicago's perspective, I'm really happy to hear that you're actually tapping into some of the resources that the city makes available through these business, you know, neighborhood business development organizations like the Polish Chamber of Commerce that we support uh, to provide no cost services to business owners in their community. So thank you for highlighting that. And, you know, I think that's a really important thing for entrepreneurs to know that there are resources that are available to them that do not cost any money that they can go out, reach out to and help support them in their business journeys. Um, so, you know, Chicago is the third largest city in America. You're a big city and you are a gallery owner in a very big city and your business has a lot of positive reviews online. How does that make you feel, Greg? Well, thank you very much. Uh... But honestly, it's very humbling and uh, really motivating. <laughs> Seeing people appreciate what we're doing here um, uh, makes all the hard work uh, uh, because it's really um, a lot of work. <laughs> uh, whenever we start the business, we have to account for how hard it's going to be to to build something from scratch. And uh, seeing uh, a good response, uh, seeing uh, uh, nice reviews, it's really motivating. It pushes us to keep building and improving. Um, so we're very 
grateful for that support. So how do you market and promote your business? So what is your marketing and promotion strategy look like? And has it evolved or shifted since you opened the studio? Yeah, um, when we first started, we relied on word of mouth and mm -hmm. our immediate network. Um, and uh, of course, um, over time, social media has become a big part. Uh, once you build uh, the the Facebook following, uh, the Instagram uh, website, uh, then it helps you uh, to uh, broadcast what you're doing here. And um, that's uh, been great uh, for sharing what we uh, what's going on at the studio and engaging with the community. Uh, but we still love in-person networking, and um, we, we we leveraged uh, all the organizations that we could. Uh, really, this is very important. Going out and uh, and it's it's actually two-way street. We're helping them uh, in many ways, and they are helping us. So building that uh, community, building that network is very important not just online presence, but uh, real connections uh, uh, at local events uh, and uh, local organizations. And I couldn't agree with you more. Just the real connections are so important in the arts and culture world yeah. and for small businesses across the city. Um, so, you know, you have one really successful location and, you know, like I mentioned earlier, your reviews are absolutely stellar online. Do you have any plans of expanding the studio or maybe opening a second location in Chicago? Hopefully Chicago. Well, um, yes and no. Uh, no, we don't have any plans to uh, uh, open second location. Uh, it's been uh, lots of work uh, here at the studio and uh, we're actually always expanding in other ways. So we expanding international internally. We're growing our network. We're bringing new curators. Uh, we're constantly coming up with fresh ideas for events. And uh, I think we have a huge potential to grow here. Uh, right now, uh, our focus is on, uh, you know, enriching the experience at this place. And uh, I think we have quite uh, ways to go. We're learning new things and... Um, um, I see a big potential at this location, plenty of work, and um, we invite everyone to check us out sometimes. Absolutely. Um, so, uh, Greg, you know, as you know, October is Polish American Heritage Month. Can you tell us how Dwell Studio plans to potentially celebrate? Yes, October is Polish American uh, Heritage Month. Um, and uh, we're actually participating in a 54th uh, Polish Heritage Ball. It's organized by, by one of the organizations that we are uh, partners with friends. We, we work together. We, we have a really good contacts. It's a Polish American Congress of Illinois. They're also celebrating 80th anniversary this year. So it's a... Um, it's a wonderful, I think it's a wonderful way to honor our heritage heritage, and stay connected to the community. Really. Absolutely. So uh, do you always just carry one artist in your space? Or do you have, do you showcase multiple artists at the same time? Um, after... Uh, uh, um... It depends. Uh, if we have uh, uh, a vernissage for one artist, we keep them on the walls for for a couple of weeks or one month where we present only their works. Uh, and uh, then in between the main shows, uh, we have a mix of uh, different artists. Um, we also take uh, some breaks, like in the summer. Um, summers are usually you know, for festivals and outdoors and, and picnics. And um, we've found out over time that people are not really eager to um, stop by here in the summer. So we're leveraging that time to do other things. And um, 
like I said, we're, we're trying to keep uh, multiple streams of income. So we have to have time uh, for other uh, things as well. And we like to travel. Uh, we, we take that time off. So on our walls, uh, there may be a um, few artists or there may be uh, one artist, uh, one artist uh, with the works. Um, it all depends. Uh, really, I would invite people to go our website and see what's going on or or check out Facebook, Instagram. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, again, thank you so much for sharing our sto your story with our attendees. I want to transition a little bit. You know, running a business, like you have mentioned multiple times, it's a lot of work. It really is a lot of work. So what do you like to do to relax? Uh, well, running a business can definitely keep us busy. So um, we like to just hop on a bike and uh, ride the, around neighborhoods. Um, we have... Uh, great parks in the city. Um, Chicago's actually really uh, bicycle friendly and uh, has lots of green spaces and parks and and even the little neighborhoods. Uh, there's always something to explore. We didn't we didn't even know Chicago since since we've been living here until we um, started exploring it from a different perspective. Riding bicycle um, and I have to admit, those are actually electric bikes. <laughs> uh, it's been easy to explore those little neighborhoods from different perspective. And uh, that's uh, something that we do in the uh, afternoons, in the evenings. Um, that's especially uh, good in the summer. We, go, we like to go to art galleries when we have time. Uh, other gallery openings, we like to see what's going on. And uh, just explore the city. That's what we like to do on a regular evening or, or free day when we find one. Yeah, and I couldn't agree with you more. I think Chicago has so much diversity, cultural, economic, just the neighborhoods are so vibrant. Um, and biking is such a wonderful way to experience the city. Um, yeah. So, you know, I... You run an art studio. So in terms of um, when you think about all the different types of artists, you do theater, children's art, you've done apparel, you've, you know, art comes in so many different shapes and forms. And you seem to at Dwell Studio kind of encompass everything, which is fabulous, by the way. But on a more personal level, Craig, what is your favorite type of art? Yeah, that's a good question, and uh, it's a hard question, really, because it's um, it's hard to pick one, pick just one. Uh, that might depend on uh, on the mood or 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 time of the year, I guess. <laughs> but I would say, really, uh, I like photography. I like uh, how photography um, captures a moment in time. I love street photography. Uh, where we really capture the ordinary lives. It, it gives us um, um, a different perspective. Um, and I must say, I'm, I'm trying myself, <laughs> photography, street photography, but uh, I really enjoy uh, um, watching uh, other photographs because the, the, there's so much that can be uh, captured and it can be also interpreted in so many different ways. And I also like uh, modern abstract paintings. It's uh, simple. I like simple, bold lines, bold colors, um, something um, that it also leaves uh, allows for creative expression and also leaves uh, a lot for viewers imagination so that speaks to me you've articulated that beautifully um, so you know this webinar series greg it's titled empower Hour. q 
Can you share a piece of advice that can empower our attendees today? Um, sure. Um, I hope I'm going to be articulate. This is, um, it's always hard to give a good advice. Your, um, your own experiences might be different. Uh, but I think um, um, my advice would be to stay curious and never stop learning. Um, whether you're starting a business or working on your art or just figuring what your next step is going to be, you have to always keep an open mind. You never know uh, what's around the corner and uh, um, what's going to be the real next thing or what's going to be the thing that actually um, fulfills your um, your passion. Yeah, And I think um, you should uh, surround yourself with people who inspire you. Who inspire you. Um, so through that inspiration, you can see what's possible out there. And um, then try to be, uh, not to be afraid to step out of your comfort zone. Growth happens um, when you're really willing to take risks. And um, I think um, you should also um, always try to stay close to your values because and uh, values and uh, whatever you do um, to not um, your values really are who you are and if you build a business um, based on your values you're never gonna regret what you do really so that would be my uh, advice i guess that is fantastic advice thank you uh, greg now for all the people on this webinar can you please provide your social media handle and your website absolutely thank you for 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 that um it's easy really easy um our facebook and instagram is uh, at dwell studio chicago and our website is also dwellstudiochicago.com. That's easy. <laughs> You're right. So and, uh, we're really happy and it's easy to share that. Yeah. Thank you. Again, really, really appreciated you taking the time to speak with us and sharing your business and entrepreneurial journey and also your personal perspectives and insights with us. Really appreciate that. Can you stay a little bit longer, Craig, so that we can take questions from the audience? Well, first of all, thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure uh, speaking with you and sharing my um, my personal experiences. And, and uh, of course, um, I'll be happy to stay and answer a few questions. Thank you. Thank you. Stella, I'm going to turn it over to you to moderate. First question, do you feature work with artists of Polish origin only? Well, no, um, we don't. It's uh, It's been our within our network. And like I said, we're building a um, connection starting from our closest networks. But we're reaching out uh, wider and wider networks right now. And we're always open to connect with with more people or with interesting uh, art and uh, whatever interesting they have to present. Um, in fact, we presented uh, uh, art by um, um, artists from uh, Arts Club of Chicago and, and other artists as well. So we're happy to have anyone. Did you take any courses to help set up your business model? Uh, well, um, I went to uh, a college, uh, business uh, and marketing. I, may, I, I was uh, studying business and uh, marketing in Poland. That was one of my um, studies. Um, and uh, I'm trying to think whether I had any special courses. Um, no, I haven't had any courses recently, uh, just from my uh, younger years when I was in college. 
How have you managed financial success, particularly with the taxes in a big city like Chicago? Um, well, we're trying to get help uh, whenever um, we, um, we have any questions. Um, Polish American Chamber of Commerce uh, and the connection uh, to the programs at the city has been helpful also. And um, there's uh, other professionals at the chamber uh, who are always happy to answer any questions we're having. Um, so I think um, just uh, reaching for professionals every time uh, we have any questions uh, and for mentors uh, that may help us or they, that are uh, happy to help us when we need some help. Next question. Can you tell us about the transition from your IT job to becoming an entrepreneur? Um, the trans transition. Well, um, in terms of uh, of uh, of uh, of jobs, it's a completely. On one hand, it's a completely different job. Um, uh, IT consultants, uh, we were traveling uh, all over the United States, uh, like I mentioned, helping uh, doctors and nurses uh, with the electronic documentation systems. So what we do here is, is different. But um, on the other hand, uh, we are still working with people. And uh, the, 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 the working with people aspects helped us a lot to open the studio and and, and working with people here. Uh, on the other hand, you have the um, um, the professional, the financial aspect. That was a little bit easier for us since uh, we were independent consultants and uh, we could uh, we could uh, take contracts when we wanted to, and uh, we could um, um, fit both uh, both goals at the same time. We just uh, the beginning with two few uh, fewer contracts, and uh, then we committed the time to building the studio. And our last question. What has been the biggest challenge for starting an art gallery? Oh, the biggest challenge. That's a tough question. I don't know um, if there is one, something uh, singular that is the biggest challenge. I think uh, overall running a business uh, is a very, um, very, uh, tough idea <laughs> it's uh, it's it's not easy to start a new business um, um of course you have to be prepared uh, for the time commitment that you have to put into a new business everything's new uh, everything uh, um, every piece of the puzzle is new from having uh, social media presence, from having uh, right accounting uh, software, having uh, all the um, design uh, softwares that you're using for your um, marketing, uh, having the printers, having all the you know people that collaborate with you. You have to build new network. Whatever, whatever kind of business you're starting, you have to build a completely new network of people and and businesses that you're collaborating. And um, and I think this is a very, uh, very big task that everyone should uh, account for when starting a new business. You just had another question come in. How does your studio work with teachers and students? With teachers in in what way? Um, can you? Sounds like they're probably looking into like a field trip, like a school field trip. Um. Well, we we haven't had um, school field trips here, but we open to do that. Uh, I think. Um, we would just have to communicate and find the best way to do that. We, we're really open 
and I think it, this would be helpful um, for us, of course, uh, to build a network, but uh, for the kids. So if someone's uh, looking to to maybe organize a field trip here, um, I would encourage them to um, contact us. The, the, there's a email and, and phone number at the website. Uh, uh, it's easy to contact us uh, with those ideas. And uh, we're really open. I think we can organize something like that. That's it for me. Thank you so much, Craig. And thank you to all our attendees for joining today's Empower Hour. You know, when Craig was speaking, I recognized that art is so important in our lives because it not only allows us to experience the world from diverse perspectives, but it also challenges some of our preconceptions. So thank you, Craig for creating such a beautiful community space in the Dunning neighborhood. Uh, thank you very much. And thank you for being here today to share your journey and your insights with us today. You can watch today's Empower Hour on BACP's YouTube channel by visiting youtube.com slash Chicago BACP. And for information on our next Empower Hour, please visit chicago.gov slash business education. Again, thank you from all of us here at BACP. Well, thank you very much for having me. It was a pleasure speaking with you and answering all the questions. Thank you very much. Thank you.